Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is episode 633. Now, nah, that's wrong. Let me check. Is that right? 653. Holy moly, it's 653 already. See, when Kyle's not around, uh, he keeps my numbers straight for me. Um, we've got Eric sitting in this week uh, because Kyle is still MIA. I swear to God he's alive and well, and he'll be back on the airwaves soon. Um, but we're going to have Eric sitting in this week. Eric, welcome aboard. Thank you, and uh, I think it's probably fair to note that most of us who listen to the show know that Kyle works for a large grocery store uh, company, and I think if we see uh, whistleblower news of some corporate (laughs) espionage going on, we know exactly where he's ended up, some sort of witness protection system (laughs) off the grid um, and can no longer do the podcast, but uh, hopefully that's not the case, but my eyes are peaking. I can't remember what I've told on air and what I've <laughs> joked about with people offline, but um, Kyle sold his house and bought a new house and had it built, had a new house built. So he didn't get the timing quite right. So <laughs> his house closed and he had to get out and his house wasn't ready. And so he's basically been homeless for the last two, three weeks um, the good news week, is he's got the beard for it, so he can sit on the corner. <laughs> he and looks, no one's gonna second yeah, guess it. He looks like a homeless guy. Um, <laughs> so, but but we we've, we've got him, got his keys. He's back. He's moving in. He has no idea where his his PC is or any of his um, podcasting stuff. But he is moving in, and I'm I'm thinking by this time next week he should be good to go. But uh, no promises. Um, <laughs> Because he's that's it's also vacation season for Kyle, and that's then right true. around the corner Camping after time. that, it's sickness time. So yeah. you, just, you just never know what it's going to be. But how do been... I get his PTO plan? <laughs> yeah, you think yeah. he's a government employee at this uh, point? I tell you, um, he um, it, it's it's an exciting week of uh, comics and comics related stuff happening this week. Um, we Loki ended, so we got the Loki finale. That was fun. Did you get a chance to catch any of that? I have not caught it. My wife watched it, and she was kind of left at the end, going, well, "What happened?" Cause, yeah. So, and and I will say this: she does not know the source material um, for Loki, so she was just watching it to be entertained while she worked out. Sure. Uh, so maybe, maybe not the the best uh, person to review it from a comics perspective side, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't don't think she was either for it or again it. She was just kind of there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we got some Emmy news this week. Uh, Mandalorian got 24 nominations and WandaVision got 23 nominations. Um, that's pretty big for um, for Disney Plus, a and and for. Uh, comics and Star Wars sci-fi related uh, TV that doesn't usually get that kind of love. So we're excited about that from a from a fanboy perspective, and I'm sure they'll get their their clocks cleaned by the Crown. But you know, still, I, it's nice to be nominated. Yeah, you know, I I'm kind of hopeful that they'll at least. I, I think that they stand a good chance in a few of the categories, and I think it just goes to show, you know, what what can happen when Hollywood shuts down due to a pandemic, right? There's certain things that they're able to continue doing. I know uh, my wife is a massive Star Wars fan um, to an almost unhealthy level, <laughs> and she was giving me like play by play updates of, oh, they've just completed this new set that's 360 degree LCD screens and they can do X, Y, and Z. And they only have to have one person in at a time so they can film through the whole pandemic. And so she was like on top of it and, and aware of what was going on. And, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting um, how Hollywood has had to adapt and how there's some shows that you just can't adapt because of how they are filmed and, you know, what the, the requirements are and how California was and what countries Um, we're putting in for regulations so i think what it's kind of come down to is the the few shows that were able to make it out are the ones that are going to you know get the publicity and reap the rewards or in this case the awards yeah i mean 23 24 nomination nation seems like a lot to me 
um, and pretty pretty healthy response. So yeah, for sure, I, I hope I hope they get something besides technical awards. Um, and it's not that neither one of them, you know, was was not worthy of these either because both of those series were fantastic. I I, I mean, what well, can you yeah. say about the Mandalorian? It's probably yeah. one of the better TV series, even though it's only what eight episodes or something. Oh yeah, that has come out in in a long long time. One of my fa- my favorites for sure. Uh, yeah. We got we got Black Widow uh, this week, so so we've got MCU stuff uh, happening again um, in the theaters and on Disney Plus. If you have premiere access, um, it this was this was taking place uh, before Infinity War and after uh, Civil War, so it was kind of rooted in that time. So. That made it kind of odd, but um, still a good popcorn flick, and nice that people are getting bit to go back to for our Marvel movies again. Yes, absolutely. Now, yesterday, to, to cap off a great week of comic news, we got the deep discount July pre-order <laughs> form that yeah, rolled out. Yeah, nice and. And late, uh, I apologize for that. I, I try and get it out earlier than this, but with adding a new distributor into the mix, um, the process that builds the order form is there's a lot of pieces that go into it. And I am so eternally grateful to John Mayo from Comic Book Page, who has donated a lot of time and patience um, to helping build that process. And through just his willingness to <laughs> work late at night and throughout the day on updates and stuff um we were able to get everything assembled to where the discounts appeared correctly and you know the bulk of the sorting is right there's there's a little bit in the back half where some of the toy companies got intermixed and whatnot and we're working on that for next month but it was important that we you know we get something out there that had the correct pricing that was the most important thing to me uh and that the publishers were sorted correctly because with marvel you've got kind of a split between diamond still finishing off through september and everything starting october one going to penguin random house um so we have that to worry about and then you know for those data geeks out there when you introduce uh, a new distributor in this case penguin random house also distributes many of the same um collected editions that diamond distributes and so when you're introducing multiple data sets you you have to do a lot of checking to validate like i only want to pull in one version of this book like i don't want to have one from penguin random house and one from diamond and you've got two conflicting order codes and you're confusing people so that was just a lot of of you know tweaking and tuning and and adjusting and it'll continue to get better um and it should be easier once the cutover for Marvel is complete and we don't have to worry about trying to scrape Marvel things out of one or the other to not duplicate it. So for those that did get it, yes, it came late. I apologize for that. And thank you for the patience. The good news is we have an extra week for uh, pre-orders to get in. So that's a saving grace. So I, I can't, couldn't code my way out of a paper bag, but what what I, I guess what I want to understand the process is that you, you, in order to keep from ma- having to manually create this ordering form process, you've you've automated taking the data sets from Diamond, the data sets from Lunar, the data sets coming from Penguin Random House down the road, and then running it through your magic machine, and then it goes into th- it with the proper codes and gets allocated in the proper tables and columns and things is that is that what you're doing so you don't have to do it manually yeah there's so there's still manual components to it but that is kind of the the base root of it is pulling in all those different disparate data sets each one of them has a different format so the different columns are in different orders they're called different things and in some cases the format of the column is different so it goes through a process to kind of standardize all of that shift things around pull it in the right places and then it has a lot of formatting just from like you know putting color bars in where the new publisher lines are 
Um, it goes through and builds out the calculation of how many bags and boards are needed. And if it's a trade or a hardcover, obviously we don't need a bag and board. So it goes through and does all of that. Um, and that's like, you know, probably a, the lion's share of the, the real crunching work that's happening. And then there's a number of other side configuration files that I uh, manually edit each month. And so there are certain things like new number ones for DC uh, image, dark horse, you know, we get 50% off. So it's going in and calling out what those item codes are and, and putting them in a certain file and indicating their deeper discount. Um, I do bundles. And so I have to go in and make sure I grab all of the, the issues that are going to be part of the bundles. And I put them into kind of a bundles file. And there's just a number of different files and some excluded items that are retailer only that you know, even if I wanted to order 50 of, I could only get one and it's only for a store it would do no one else any good. So I remove those so you don't see them because um, it's just wasting space. So there's a number of those little files I put, uh, you know, put in some manual effort to do. And then the process runs and it takes everything, puts it together and spits out the order form. And like I said, it's it's really the brainchild of John's and I have to give him all the credit for it. Um, and I, I am just so grateful it, it exists. Yeah, it would, it would really, would it make your job um, even harder? Oh, God. Uh, you, it would, you know, without <laughs> if, that. If I had to do it manually, it would probably take me two, three days straight of doing nothing but staring at Excel and yeah. cursing a lot, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. Now, can do you get the raw data sets far enough in advance that you could just, could you just throw those out and say, here's what's coming? Or, or, it's too raw that it wouldn't even be worthwhile for anybody. Um, you know, I, I could, well, how do I want to say this? So I could generate the, the order form. It probably close to the end of the month for the month. And so we're in July. If we're talking about the August order form, probably around the late 20 ish days of this month, I would have the data available to put the order form together in a first cut. Um, but I wouldn't have all of the information yet because sometimes things get added a little bit late. Um, creator names get added late. I also wouldn't have the time yet to go through and, and take care of the discounting and whatnot. So it would be a little bit incomplete, um, which is, that's that's the hard part is you want it to be a complete data set. I don't want to be sending multiples and confusing people. So gotcha. um, and then as far as what the raw data files look like, could I just, you know, publish those and make them available? Yeah, I could. But they're really not going to help you because they're comma separated um, text files that if you if you're not a person who knows how to import data like that and work with it, it's just going to look like the longest run on sentence you've ever seen in your life. Right. So. It so how does how does your process and timing stack up against your some of your competition? Is it is it like give or take a week? You you in the same ballpark? I try to be within a few days of our competition, and I know some months I'm a little bit farther behind. Um, and part of that is due to the fact that my process um, for <laughs> a lot of the other aspects of my business are very manual. Um, and we're working on automating a lot of those, but it's baby steps. We can only do so much so fast. So because I have uh, manual work to do that slows me down from other things and on top of it, it's not my full-time job. Um, my full-time job is a 40-hour week gig that, um, you know, quite frankly, without that, I wouldn't be able to, to do the comic book stuff. So, um, so that's what kind of slows me down a little bit. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, is I do tend to give a little bit extra time compared to my competition, uh, which yes eh, can have me up late on a Thursday night before an order is due. But you know what? I, that's a sacrifice that I'm much more able and willing to make um, to give a couple extra days for folks as opposed to giving it to them a little bit late and then shorting them. So just kind oh, yeah. of the way it, way it shakes. Plus, I, I know that I'm one of the very few that does FOC. Um, and that does take time every week. So I, and quite honestly, I, I do just about as much business through FOC as I do from monthly pre-orders. So, uh, it, it is a very key part of the business. Oh man, those people like me who got lazy and decided to go FOC, um, <laughs> that's, that's a problem. I, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. It's not a problem because quite honestly, you know, it, it was one of the things that I saw a hole in the market and I realized that, you know, if stores have the opportunity to add items on, why shouldn't customers have the opportunity to add items on? And the only way that we can guarantee that we're going to add items on is to give those who would potentially want them an opportunity to order them. Right. Yeah. And the other thing right. is, you know, like most of the stores around us don't get a lot of second prints, um, especially if it's not a Marvel or a DC book, because they're just unaware. And those are generally only show up on FOC. So, you know, giving customers the chance to get some of those things like Nice House on the Lake. That was a book that a lot of people missed the first issue on because they just, you know, you miss it. You miss things. People miss things all the time. They don't listen um, to our show. Exactly. <laughs> or, or they just look at it and they say, you know what, I've got too much on my stack. And that's an unknown. And I'm not going to give up Avengers or Spider-Man or Batman to get an unknown and then they hear about it and they go shoot i really wish i would have gotten that and then a covers you know or even b covers i can't find them anywhere if i do their double triple cover so the second print you know for the person who just wants to read it becomes important to them and if they don't have an opportunity or if you don't give your customers an opportunity to give input as to how many you should be ordering you could order order yourself short and so yeah. You know, the FOC is really valuable and can be used to the, the business can leverage it for the good of all the rising tide that lifts all ships. Right. It yeah. does more sales for us. So that's obviously more money in our pocket. But more importantly, is that it gives another opportunity for the customers to be able to get what they want. And like you said, Drew, one of the reasons that you kind of converted more to the FOC was because there's a lot of times cover art isn't available until you know, you're getting closer to, to FOC time. And even then, yeah. not all the cover art's available. And and you're, you and Kyle have gone on record as being the kind of folks that, depending on the cover, that can that can sway you, right? You see a good Sienkiewicz cover over something else, you're more prone to get that if it's not a ratio. And for Kyle, he always, you know, it's the flip of the coin on the Nightwing covers. Do I get the A or the B? So, yeah. you know, it that that's another one of the advantages that folks use FOC for. And, and I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's cool. Well, let's take a look at uh, just some of the things that you've highlighted in this month's uh, order form for in its previews that's coming. It's a July preview, so that means it's coming out in September, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So um, highlighted a couple things from uh, DC here. We've got Batman vs. Big B, A Wolf in Gotham. Um, this is a Bill Willingham book. So Bill Willingham, obviously, from Fables. Um Something that looks interesting. I think there's a couple of, of folks that have um, kind of discussed it in a couple of YouTube shows, and it made the rounds a little bit when the previews first came out. So it could be something interesting for folks to check out. Black Manta, obviously, um, getting a little bit more play right now in the DCU uh, because I believe there's some plans either for a movie or TV appearance. So there's a new uh, Black Manta mini coming out. Wanted to highlight that, which the cover is actually quite quite fetching. The Valentine Delandro. Mm -hmm. um, another one that has a great cover. It's a it's a Matina cover for Deathstroke Inc. Number one. Uh, basically, every Matina cover always sells out when we get it in. We always add extra, so we've got the artist pull. Uh, it's a number one. It's Deathstroke. Uh, Deathstroke has been heating up a lot of folks in coming into our store are looking for death stroke back issues. And quite frankly, that's one that over the last couple of years, we've had a really hard time uh, getting in or keeping in stock. So what's uh, the uh, reason for the interest? I think it's just right now that character is sparking interest from folks. I'm not hundred percent sure on what it is, um, but I think, you know, kind of can be one of those fear of missing out things where, a couple of people online, you know, on a YouTube channel or something like that, they're talking about it and they're saying it's hard to find and other people go out to look for it and it's hard to find for them. And it just kind of cascades along. Yeah, so snowballs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, from DC, uh, Green Arrow, Longbow Hunter Saga, Omnibus Hardcover Volume 2. It's Mike Grell. And uh, this is the, the first volume of this is one of the top selling omnibus that we have ever had in the store. And it is by no means a small book. It is 
definitely one of DC's big hefty, you know, 1200 page omnibus, but it's Mike Grell doing Green Arrow. Uh, it's just gorgeous work, obviously, um, but it's been a huge seller for us. So, uh, you know, made sure to highlight that. And then if we take a sneak down to look at image, we've got the two number ones that are coming out this month, Primordial from Jeff Lemire. And uh, we've got Frontiersman being the other, and that's got a B cover by Matteo Scalera. Um, both interesting sounding. I think for, for me personally, Primordial sounds more interesting. It's around the, uh, the animals. It, of course, it's fiction, but taking place in the real world where we had the space race and, uh, you know, Russia sent up dog and America sent up two monkeys and they were, you know, obviously left in space. And so you can assume what has happened, but this story kind of focuses on, they weren't actually left, they were taken and now they're coming back. So we don't know what angle that's going to be, but um, could be interesting. So yes, could those, be. I like it. Yeah. Those are the image ones. And uh, you know, the old adage, it's got a monkey on the cover. It's going to sell good. Now, typically it's a gorilla, but I would say a monkey counts close to a gorilla. Uh-huh. Personal close, credit. not exact. Yeah. Um, from Marvel, we've got Dark Ages Mini, one through uh, issue one of six. Uh, again, like Marvel, plenty of covers to choose from. We have Death of Doctor Strange, number one, which this one, I'm, uh, I'm a huge Doctor Strange fan, so I'm not sure how I'm going to like this, but you, know, you got to call it out. And Drew? For you, I was literally thinking of you when I did this. <laughs> Moon Knight number three. Um, it's a just gorgeous cover. Uh, and Moon Knight itself has got a ton of interest, which obviously with a TV show going on uh, in the works, it's it's definitely prime for that. I think Marvel's putting you know their best foot forward and, and really wanting to showcase Moon Knight and put out a great product. So we're happy to see that. And then uh, Thunderbolts. Omnibus Volume 2, um, I don't know, what can you say about Thunderbolts? One of the greatest uh, greatest underrated runs in the Marvel Universe, as far as I'm concerned. And then from our, our other publishers, we've got um, a new Vader's Castle entry by IDW for Star Wars, The Dawn of the Droids. Uh, it's a five-issue mini, and a lot of the Star Wars adventures books that IDW is doing have been really good i mean a lot of people will ignore them because they are kind of more all agey but um you know survey says they're pretty good so if you if you're a star wars fan especially if you have kids that are star wars fans these are great stories for them um really good things for them to get into kind of wet their whistle for star wars in comic form if they're not ready to make the jump to you know some of the the marvel books yet uh, it's a great place to start uh we've also got from a blaze he who fights with monsters um this cover just caught me right away it's kind of got oh, yeah. some world war ii era um action going on and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing what this book's all about we've got from awa telepaths um this is j michael straczynski with steve epting doing the art and i'm a sucker for anything that epting does uh, oh yeah velvet by brubaker with epting doing the art is one of the most gorgeous um, collections that I have. So um, Steve doing both cover and interior art on this. Very exciting. I look forward to that. Uh, we have Forsaken number one, and that's coming out of Second Sight Comics, a uh, small back at half publisher that not a lot of people really pay attention to. They they aren't on the FOC, so you're not going to see them there. Um, and, you know, pre-orders are your oftentimes your only opportunity to get some of those smaller back half publishers. Uh, and then coming out of Titan in the uh, hard case crime components of their their offerings is Gun Honey. Uh, I love the hard case crime books, all Me of them. Too. Oh, yeah. Good. Some of them have been a little obscure as far as kind of the premise, but the execution of them is great. Uh, I, and I'm a big kind of mystery crime noir fan. So that's a big one for me. And then um, I've been trying to highlight some some manga every month, uh, at least one volume. I think last month I did Pokemon. Um, this month we've got Mao, number uh, graphic novel volume one. And uh, I'm going to have to pull up what that is because I will admit I've forgotten since I was pulling this all together. Uh, I can't help you. 
I know, I know, I know. Um, so, okay, when Nanoka travels back in time to a supernatural early 20th century, she gets recruited by aloof exorcist Mao. What is the thread of fate that connects them? Together they seek answers and kick some demon butt along the way. So, uh, yeah, it sounded kind of fun. A little bit of time travel, some demons, um, kind of action drama. Um, so that was why I threw that one in there. Just a little something fun, a little extra flavor. So those are what the ones that I highlighted. Fantastic. And um, you got your order form. You know it's due by Thursday, January, July 29th. So get your orders put together. And what I need to focus on, um, even though I'm primar- primarily FOC, I still need to take a good hard look at that back half because, like Eric said, a lot of those publishers aren't on FOC. So you you got to you got to make sure you don't miss anything back there if you miss something on the big two no problem you know big three uh most of the premier publishers you could definitely get those on foc but if you miss something on the back half you're you're out and sometimes there's some real hidden gems back there so i i need to make sure i take a good hard look and focus my energy there even though i get and not get distracted by moon knight (laughs) yeah i think that that's you know if i could give one piece of advice to publishers my advice would be i would rather you push your publishing date out a week uh and put your stuff on foc because it does that little bit of extra visibility yeah gives gives retailers an extra chance to like oh yeah i i probably should order this because quite frankly when you're when you're a retailer and you're putting in your monthly pre-order and you're looking at 3500 lines you're right. scrolling fast because you know, if you take 30 seconds uh, per line, that's what, 1,750 per minute? Well, yeah, so 1,750 minutes? Just, yeah, you're not getting that done. So you just, you kind of got to scroll fast. And so FOC is a more consolidated list, um, broken down weekly, so it gives you a better chance to see everything. Yeah, and I can, I can kind of focus because it's bite-sized chunks, you know? Yep helps me with my add i guess so (laughs) now last time you were here eric you graciously were sharing with us some of your exclusive covers and you were sharing them with our listeners the if we got new patrons on our patreon channel you were going to give them um a full set of shadow man uh covers shadow man number three the jenny frizen covers and since since you left, you decided to add a fourth cover to that package, right? Is that correct? Correct. So for the after the last episode, the next three people that joined and were were patrons for uh, you know more than two months, I will send the those three a full set of our trade dress exclusives by Jenny Frizen for our the Shadow Man arc volume, uh, whatever volume one is going to be. I think they're calling it. In previews, it's like Shadow Man 2021, but um, this first volume of the new Colin Bunn Shadow Man is four issues long, and you will get a trade dress Jenny Frizen exclusive cover set of all four of them. And those slots are not full, so don't think like you missed out. Um, There's still opportunities for new patrons to pop on and, and claim those prizes. In fact, in addition to that, um, not only can you get that, but you also get entered to win um, a CGC 9.8 slab donated by one of our other patrons. So you, there's lots of prizes available, like the most prizes available from for any patron of any Patreon. I mean, you got to be top 10 for sure. Uh, <laughs> where else are you going to get this much cool swag? Um, plus, you get to you get to be a part of our Slack channel and hang out with us in that community. You get um, to hear episodes early, and you get exclusive episodes that nobody else uh, gets to hear, and other cool things. So check that out. It's Patreon.com/slash Comics for Fun and Profit, and join up um, at a level you feel comfortable with. Um, now. Also, since a couple of weeks ago, you've got to get another exclusive coming, and this is um, this is one of uh, a series that just finished up that I love, uh, Stray Dogs. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have approval uh, for a limited trade, volume one, with an exclusive cover of Stray Dogs. Um, the cover is an homage to something that's killing children 11. The art is still awaiting full final approval, but we were approved with the concept, approved with um, the print run, approved to do everything. So we've started pre-sales of it. Uh, it's available at shopcowbunga.com. And uh, yeah, it's it's by Gorkram Demir, who has done our Department of Truth number 10 exclusive and our Ha Ha number six that just came out uh, this week. We also are going to be getting an Ice Cream Man 25 by him that will uh, you know, be very similar in stylistic tone to our Ha Ha six. Uh, but yeah, so he's doing that. Um, we are also in talks with image uh, because of how well the pre-sales on this are going and it's it's going to be uh limited to 500 copies uh, but pre-sales are just through the roof uh there's already people like reselling them on ebay for 100 bucks a piece your for 25 yeah your yeah. exclusive <laughs> yeah um we are we are also in talks to do a sketch version of it that will be even more limited waiting on final approval for that so uh, yeah, that's that's going on. Um, like I said, we have Ice Cream Man 25 coming up. Ninjak 1 by Ashley uh, Witter just hit the shelves this week. We have Shadow Man 4 coming out soon by Jenny. We have, we'll have Department of Truth uh, 1112, both by Gorkum Demir as well. That'll be coming out on their release dates. Um, just signed an agreement for another exclusive that I'm gonna hold close to my vest for the moment but gotcha yeah the, the train continues um it's been really exciting getting to work with some of these um uh, top artists gorkum is one of the top artists in turkey um if, if you've never heard of him uh, you can look him up on facebook um on google you just gorkum demir uh, g-o-r-k-e-m-d-e-m-i-r is how you spell his name uh fantastic artist uh just absolutely great and is loving doing all these exclusive covers he's done uh does more in the horror genre um than anything he that's kind of where he likes to play but an up-and-coming artist from turkey that i think a lot of people uh, will start to see more of both from us and from other stores getting him to do exclusives as well so you discovered him um to, to do like has anybody else been using him before you or were you like the first to start to reach out to him for this sort of thing uh he's done a little bit of work for a couple of other folks for exclusives uh he's done exclusive covers in turkey there's actually certain certain marvel books um are translated into turkish i believe and there's a kind of a publisher over there or a printer i guess that works on that component of things and so he's worked with them um, but the so anything that is Gorkum Demir, uh, we actually have a partner that we're doing these exclusives with. And this is a, an artist that they've known for a couple of years. And uh, they're now in a position where they wanted to explore doing the exclusives. And they asked for our, our input and our expertise. And so we just decided to go ahead and do it as a joint venture. So we're essentially the vehicle that's kind of of kind of driving it um but they were the ones that really brought the uh brought gorkum to us as as a feasible op option so that's pretty cool um anything else happening in uh, cowabunga news that you want to touch on oh um it feels like there's always something happening in cowabunga news um for that's those good, that though. are yeah yeah for those that are near um keep an eye on our facebook page because uh, we will be having a signing with uh, John Jackson Miller. He's going to come to the store. Oh, so, wow. You know, a, a Star Wars fan. Um, the One of the omnibus that just came out features a lot of the work that he did for Knights of the Old Republic in it. Um, so he'll be at the store swinging by to do a signing. And like I said, keep an eye on our Facebook page for that if you're, you know, in the local area. Can can you tell him that Drew Drew wants some uh, monthly sales numbers again? If he could uh, if he could make that oh. happen, you, you and everybody else in the industry. <laughs> he, he's he's the Comicron guy. If you don't know, 
Yep. Yeah, it's, it's uh, John Jackson Miller, Milton Grief, and John Mayo are the three number crunchers. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, for whatever it's worth. So, John Jackson Miller is coming, coming to the shop. And then um, John Mayo works for the same company that I do. And it's headquartered in Milwaukee. And I was telling John, like, boy, how great would it be if you, you know, had to come up to have some on-site meetings <laughs> do is go up to Madison and find Milton. And, uh, you know, we just have the number summit at, at Calbunga. But, uh, <laughs> all, all you nerds talking talk number. <laughs> all you nerds talking code at the same time. My God, <laughs> please don't film it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could, it could be one of those things to help people fall asleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's like ASMR, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Just numbers. All it is is numbers. No. So, um, but yeah, so we've got that going on. Obviously, free comic book day, August 14th. Um, that's going to be a big to do. Um, yeah. So it's just, it's, it's been, it's been super busy. Um, yeah. Can't beat it. That's awesome. Now let's take a little break and head on over to our hot 10 from our good friends over at Comic Book Invest. Um, coming in at number one, we have Avengers number eight, which is um, Kang, uh, Kang first appearance. And you know why, uh, if you're watching TV. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, sold an 85, a 9.2 sold for 8,500, a 7.0 for 4,000, a 6.0 for 2,700. And it goes on and on and on. Definitely a least surprising number one. I won't hate on this one yet, at least not yet. Kang will be sought after for quite a while going forward. Yeah, at least through what's he going to be in that Doctor Strange? Yeah. And and well, and and in the Loki two season right. two, probably be back for that. So yeah, he'll be around for a while. Um, at number two, we have Avengers two sixty seven. Um, another Kang, Kang book. Holy moly, there's been a lot of sales for this book this week. Uh, this one sold uh, just a short time ago for about 20 bucks, and it's now in the 60 to 80 dollar range. There are hardly any graded copies available, so these listings will go high until everyone can get their raw copies graded, maybe by the start of 2022. For added fun, go find the, a Mark Jewelers version. Now, are, are those Canadian? Is that, are the Mark Jewelers Canadian? Yep. Is that what that is? Okay. At rank three, we have Black Widow Prelude, exclusive photo variant. Uh, this is strictly a guess, but this looks like this is an international variant only because all the sales are from overseas and it is selling for around $40 plus international su- shipping, so about $60 effectively. At rank four, We have Avengers number two from 2017. This is a Mark Wade, Mike Del Mundo book. Um, Still more Kang on the cover. Uh, This is Alex Ross doing Kang, which is even better. Uh, And this is um, was never never a big seller, but now it's selling twenty five dollars to thirty bucks a piece. Um, At rank five, we have Ghostbusters number 14, the Tristan Jones one in ten taxi driver variant. Uh, multiple sales this week from two to four hundred dollars. People who didn't know about this book do now. Magnificent homage to a classic movie poster. Classic movie posters are the way to go for comic variants these days, I guess. Uh, rank six, we have Chariot number one from Bryant Hill, Brian Hill, and Priscilla Petrates. Uh, optioned this week by Warner Brothers, this price has jumped to twenty-five to thirty bucks. Just like the caveat from 100 other indie books that get optioned, be careful investing too much on these types of titles because they may never see the light of day. Uh, Rank seven, we have Wildcats number one, the newsstand version uh, from what, 92, 91, something like that, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Write it from writer Jim Lee and Brandon Choi. Uh, DC is bringing them back apparently. Although some members have popped up in continuity from time to time, so there is renewed interest here, up to twenty-five to thirty bucks a piece from five to ten. So good increases there. Millions of these books out there. So just keep that in, <laughs> keep that in mind. Uh, rank eight, we have Silver Surfer Black number two. 
the Giuseppe Camincoli CDCC variant. You probably you might not have this one. You're a big surfer fan, aren't you, Eric? I am. I do not have this one now. Yeah. Um, it's a Donny Cates Silver Surfer. Not sure exactly how rare these color versions are. The black and white ones are apparently limited to only 25. Anyway, these definitely aren't plentiful and are up to almost $300 raw. At rank nine, we have Sensational She-Hulk, number 40, uh, from John Byrne. Uh, $600 for a 9.6. $275 for a raw. I mean, I like this cover as much as the next guy, but wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's no bikini cover. Yeah, we'll take it. Um, at rank 10, we have Canto 3, Lionhearted, number one. The Jorge Corona. 1 in 25 variant. Uh, Canto just keeps on going. This is uh, 40, 30 to 40 bucks. Um, and we, we knew we knew Canto was going to sell well again. Uh, honorable mentions go to Never Never, number one, uh, from what it, Virus Publication? Virus Comics, maybe? Um, it's $15 plus. In reading the synopsis, this appears to be a horror take on Peter Pan. I'm still waiting for a horror take on Dumb and Dumber. Ha ha ha! Uh, you have to admit that would be awesome. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know this one. I this one flipped under my radar completely. This never, never. This is a non FOC book. Yes, yes, one of those we were just talking about. And a throwback to Casper the Friendly Ghost number twenty, uh, an actual key as this is the first appearance of Wendy the Witch. Not mm-hmm. an easy book to find. A nine two. Sold this week for $3,120. Triple what the last sale in grade was in 2019. So, Casper, who knew? Harvey Comics. Uh, now let's slide over and take a look at... It's like Deep Discount Day. We'll take a look at our FOCs <laughs> from our good folks at, at Deep Discount. And um, we don't have anything featured. You know why? Because he's here. Eric's right here. And he can help us maneuver through all the goodness that is foc he can do his best yes you want to start in dc anything pop out at you well uh you know i think that there's what's going on here there we go getting my lunar view up so i can make sure i have everything in front of me and i had it set to the wrong dates um, so I guess right off the, the top, we have uh, Batman and Catwoman um, slightly delayed. This was solicited in March, but it's now finally going to make its way out. A lot of people, you know, waiting for kind of the resolution of this story, and they're only halfway through. So that's one that probably uh, the, the Jim Lee cover, the B cover, is probably going to be one that a lot of folks are looking for. Those um, Batman 89 books are pretty not snazzy. I like those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that was a big film for me back in the day. Uh, what else we got? So for those that are, are collected editions, so I don't know, Drew, you guys don't really get much on the collected editions, but I don't know how much you've seen uh throughout the pandemic and and even since then collected editions are selling out faster than ever before and going starting to go for some very ridiculous prices um we're talking like hundred dollar omnibus that are selling for four or five hundred dollars within weeks of their release date because they're sold out and people want them uh so always something to keep an eye on if you're a person who likes those collected editions you know be aware of what's either coming out so you can try and get it uh, or more importantly order it ahead of time but collected editions don't have printings right so if um, a, they do if, they oftentimes do so but in the, can't, in the front can't marvel just say i'm going to we're going to print more of this and it and it, it can be the same printing so I'm not 100% sure how it works. I would need to have some someone from the book industry state it, but I believe any time that they go back to print on something, they have to put a new date in the indicia. So that's why if you look on the front of, you know, like I'm just going to pick a really random example here, James and the Giant Peach. 
um, which is not a comic book, but still a classic. Uh, if you open it up and look at the indicia, depending on on what it is, you'll see like the original date. You'll see like four or five dates listed, and those are the printings previous to it. Um, there's also different ways that they'll code things uh, as far as listing what printing happened when. So like some of the Star Wars hardcovers um, from years past, there was a printing that went to the book club first and then it went to the direct market. So there are ways that they version everything and people will look for first edition omnibus of certain marvel omnibus and they only want the first printing edition because that's you know more sought after um, so there are ways to do it and i think there are certain requirements on printers and how they have to uh, kind of note it now it's not it's not like on a comic book where we have those extra five um the extra five digits in the barcode to tell you the issue the cover and the printing number but i think it's listed in the indicia wow okay well, you heard it here, folks. I, uh, Drew was wrong. Drew was wrong. <laughs> First time for everything. Can you believe that? I'm going to write it down on the calendar. Yeah. Uh, we get a nice house on the lake, third printing, and the cover continues to de- deteriorate, and we get to see more of the inside page. Fun concept. I like it. Um, and then I really like the 1 in 25 with this, like, um, kind of rundown of all the cast of characters that's pretty cool too um, yeah you, you've been enjoying the book i have only read the first issue um I, I have the second issue sitting there i haven't got a chance to read it yet um but yes i have I've, i like the first issue a lot yeah it's it's been very interesting um obviously for those that don't know james tyne in the fourth grew up in wisconsin i actually grew up very near where the comic shop is uh for where, where kyle bunga is so um a lot of his stuff that he sets in Wisconsin is kind of fun. Uh, but I can promise you, you can drive around and look at every lake in the state, and you will probably won't be able to get it done before you die to see if you can find this lake. <laughs> because there's a uh, fun fact. Minnesota claims to be the land of 10,000 lakes. They only have a little over 11,000. We have 13,000 lakes in the state of Wisconsin. We don't need to brag. Yeah. Um, but we also don't have any that have mountains around it like some of the panels in the book do. So you won't ever find the lake. But it's still a fun concept. Yes. I, I, yeah, I love the concept a lot. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I've – has it been optioned yet? If not, it will be soon because it's just – You got to think it will be. It's, it's it, ready-made yeah. for um, yep. a, a smaller big screen for sure. The fact that it uses humans instead of something else makes it easier to – uh, cast as well yeah and we've got a new pennyworth series alfred pennyworth as an mi6 counterintelligence agent cold war area cold war era soviet russia so that'll be fun can't believe we're getting a, another deluxe edition hardcover for batman arkham asylum oh my god how many of these are out there <laughs> not enough it must still be selling, though, I guess, or still be demand for it. Crazy. That's kind of all I saw from DC that I wanted to highlight. You know, I anything? would say not for a not for spec so much, but for those who want to read truly amazing comics, uh, the Saga of the Swamp Thing box set uh, has all of the the trades of alan moore's amazing swamp thing run with art by yeah. steve Bissett and john toddleben um if you haven't read it and you have read watchmen and kind of like it or you've read v for vendetta you kind of like it um e- oh do yourself a favor and pick it up it's one of my absolute favorite runs in all of comics it's phenomenal it took a book that was kind of a no one really cared. I mean, it had its pocket fans, um, but it wasn't yeah. really, you know, lighting up the charts. Alan Moore came in as kind of this fresh green writer um, with a couple of fantastic artists that were waiting to break out. And they turned it into a book that spawned a lot of the things that we're seeing um, gain popularity around the DCU. Things like, you know, characters like Deadman, Constantine. Um, you've got concepts of the Justice League Dark. That all is rooted in a lot of what Alan did in Saga of the Swamp Thing. Um, 
created characters, created concepts, and really transformed what was a kind of a character on the sidelines to absolutely cannot miss um, comics. So, yeah, I highly recommend it. I am, and I probably should touch on the Hill House box set. Um, so, retails for a hundred bucks, but you can get it from Cowabunga for fifty. And it's got six of the Hill House books collected. You get a uh, basket full of heads, Lolo Woods, Dollhouse Family, Daphne Byrne, Plunge, um, plus Sea Dogs. <laughs> the the backups that were in all those books get pulled out with an additional 14 pages. Um, I loved like 80% of the Hill House books. So definitely worth it. So for what, 10 bucks a trade? And now you get all of them less than that, eight bucks a trade. Um, you get all those if you missed, if for some reason you missed missed or, or want them collected. It's definitely a good deal. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, you get a nice little slip case. Absolutely. With them. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, Unicorn's going to a second printing from Scout. Um, I'm, gl- I'm, I'm glad to see that a, uh, a lower priced uh, book like that sells through and gets to go back and sell again. That's, that's good. What is the scoot thing? That's their kind of more all ages imprint, similar to Boombox for Boom. It's it's geared more towards an all ages audience. And this is just a uh, here's here's some of the offerings we have. Please check them out or or these are things that are upcoming. Uh, in in what sense? It's called what is it called? A Scoot Frontiers issue one. I was thinking it was like oh. a, 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 a like an anthology. Yeah, that's what I'm to understand. There it is. Okay. So I thought you were looking at Unicorn. So I believe Unicorn is part of the uh, Scoot imprint. Oh, is it? Is it? Yes. Oh, uh, this is an all ages magazine. Each Scoot Frontiers is designed to be a standalone spectacular, highlighting Scoot favorites in comic book stories and prose. Okay, well, it's so got it's spec kind of, right in the name. It's kind of like a highlights magazine. Yes. All right. Hard pass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, let's, hey, for, not necessarily for the young kids in your life. You've got some nieces and nephews, good sir. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That dad, dad, their dad can take care of them. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, uh, from once dark, he gets out of hiding. <laughs> once, once, once he gets done whistleblow testimony. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's a pretty good one. I've never heard that one. Uh, uh, on to Dark Horse. Yeah, yeah, we got the unbelievable Unteens World of Black Hammer, number one. So we're gonna we're gonna ride this pony a little bit more. Jeff Lemire is, and we're just gonna milk this bad boy. Uh, what are we doing now? It's this. This is uh, taking place between two different worlds. After signing at a comic convention, unbelievable unteens artist Jane Ito finds herself visited by one of her characters from her own creation, but was it her own creation? Okay, so I, so since I've jumped off of Black Hammer, the you know I was just reading the original, and I think I don't think I know what's going on here. I don't know what this is about. So I missed I missed the boat here. You also missed the Masters of the Universe Revelation number two. Um, the first issue was a smash hit. Flew oh, off bet. the shelves. Motu is is back, and it is back in all the right ways. So this is definitely one for folks to keep an eye on. Um, as we know, issue twos always can be uh, trickier to find as the drop-off happens. So make sure you get yours. And there's this Sinkevich cover B. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Who's that guy? That's Who pretty that amazing. Uh, it's not real murky or anything like some of his stuff can be. It's just straight up. Yeah, Skeletor. <laughs> He-Man and Skeletor. He-Man and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's going to sell well. Uh, we talked a little pretty good, too. I didn't look at it. it. I didn't look at it. I was drawn. You better look at it. I, would, I was drawn to cover B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not. Okay, Dave Wilkins. I like that. I see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, maybe you get both, right? I I would. It's a good one too. The retailer says you should buy both. <laughs> Trust him. 
he knows what he says. <laughs> he wouldn't. He wouldn't do you wrong. No. Um, in IDW, of course, Canto Three, Lionhearted. We've got both the A cover by uh, Zucker, and then there's a one in ten, one in ten, um, Mateus Santaluco cover, which is actually pretty cool. It's Canto with a like an axe or something above his head and lightning striking. Mm-hmm. We have also have Star Wars: The High Republic Adventures, The Monster of Temple Peak. Uh, so the other one must have finished, I'm guessing. Uh, I think volume one wrapped up. I have a hunch they're going to start another uh, second volume, but yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, Image has uh, a, ma- a man among ye. Yeah, the, the first issue back was this past week. Uh, a lot of people were excited to have it have it back on the shelf. Yeah. We got Deep Beyond that has uh, been a strong seller in our in the store. Your Gandolfo title. Yeah, you know it's uh I really like it. It's probably my favorite title of hers so far. Really... I've I've had a, there's been a lot of people that have said that. They've said yeah. that some of the other stuff she does is just a little too far afield, but this one, for whatever reason, uh, has really connected more. I, I was kind of thinking maybe she was struggling a little bit with like language translation or something. It, like in un, Unnatural, it got really clunky, some of the dialogue. But so yeah. far, this deep beyond, they've done a really good job with uh, um, dialogue and things. It's It's worked out really well, and it's a fun story. Was unnatural image or was that boom? I think it was image. Okay. She's I was pro- just wondering. I, if, I, I think she's if done. Something it could have been too. an editorial thing where, you know, depending on which which company was doing it. Yeah, that's possible. How is uh, six sidekicks selling in uh, your store? Um, it's it's got a couple of folks following it but it's definitely not burning up the charts for us is image as a whole doing anything at your store yeah image is doing stuff one that we we didn't talk about is lazarus risen lazarus still has a very strong following for us uh it's unfortunate that it it's quarterly or 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 less but it definitely has strong following um i i think image is our image numbers are up on average but it's not really any one significant thing it's just kind of all all titles are up i would say that the one image title that does continue to have really high strong numbers is uh spawn because they're doing the one in fives and sometimes the one in fifties and the fervor with the spawn universe and all of that kind of stuff coming out that's that's added to it but everything else has kind of slowly gained a little bit of steam nothing really sticking out more than anything else well their their stable is a lot stronger than it was two years ago you know i know i think it was, yeah it was a couple of years ago you 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 were telling me that there's oh, nobody they nobody wanted any image <laughs> yeah yeah i would say actually probably the number two behind spawn is geiger that's oh. that's been a huge one um i think ultra mega people initially kind of tried it but i think uh the price point was a little much for them. And I think that's the struggle with Skybound X. Um, the price point is a little high, especially for a weekly book. So, uh, or, or whatever it is every other week. So people have kind of been a little bit lukewarm on those. Yeah. Six ninety nine, five ninety nine tend to be a little much repeatedly. Well, when we get down to Marvel. We have, uh, uh, Avengers doing another mech crossover book this time with Jim Zub taking on Zub. these must be doing well because they seem they keep cranking them out these Avengers uh, I, I, I Avengers I don't mech know where they're doing well <laughs> not for you right no. no they don't really sell so well for us and that's okay not everything has to sell well for us we accept that yes is there any buzz for the new defenders Yes, there is. There actually is quite a bit of excitement around that. Our Defenders Back Issue Bin uh, section has been pillaged many times over. Um, And the one, I mean, it's a ratio, but one that's getting a lot of looks. um, 
from folks is the Defenders 1 Momoko Silver Surfer Black variant um, for multiple reasons. Obviously, it's Silver Surfer Black, but it's also Peach Momoko. So we've got a number of, of folks that have inquired about that one. Marvel Spider-Man, um, oh, sorry, Marvel Spider -Man, Miles Morales Spider-Man, the Natiz Marvel Games variant. Um, I think the previous issue, issue 28, also had a Natiz cover, or or maybe it was a different Spider-Man, but we brought in a, a handful of the, the game variant to put on the shelf, and those sold out before the A cover. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's just the what it is, but these covers are really... Um, kind of building up and people are liking them so that's one that could become something down the road depending on how those continue to trend now we're seeing um penguin random house uh trades in here alongside the comics that are still coming from diamond uh how confusing is that for you <laughs> uh, <don't> worry, yeah <laughs> it's gonna be i think the the biggest hurdle honestly i think for us and again, as I've said in multiple places and multiple times, our job of running the store is to get you your product. So are we going to gripe and moan about change? Of course, everyone hates change. But, um, you know, ultimately, we should just shut up and you should get your stuff. If you want to peek behind the curtain, the thing that's going to be really stressful is trying to figure out when this stuff is coming in and how it all comes out. Um, if we want to do a quick commercial break, I can give a little real small insight into how shipments arrive to us and what these changes are doing. Sure. Um, so from Diamond, your shipment by nature is supposed to arrive on Wednesday, unless you pay a small nominal fee for day early delivery. So we like Everybody to have our books that. out on the shelf. Right, right. Because you want your books out on the shelf on Wednesday, so you might as well pay the small fee to get them the day earlier. So we get our, our um, Diamond shipment 99% of the time on Tuesday, weather, truck on fire, whatever comes a day late. So Tuesday, we get our diamond books for sale the next day. DC, we're getting them the Thursday prior. Penguin Random House is going to have its own shipping schedule. And the way that we, we prefer as a store to do all of that work is we prefer to have all the new product out and do all of our weekly pull lists. Just at one time, as opposed to trying to, you know, like, okay, I'm going to do DC today. I'm going to do Marvel tomorrow. And then I'm going to do the rest another day. We like to do it all at once. And so that's going to be the part over the kind of, I don't know, September, October timeframe will things shift where it's like, okay, what's coming in? What has to go out that I can see us getting a little uh, burning a few extra brain cells as we try and figure it out, shall we say? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a challenge. So, but it's okay. Like I said, the end game is you should get your stuff and it's whatever work we go through shouldn't matter. That's our job. That's why we yeah. run the store and you're the customer. So, so it looks like, like if you get the X-Men Hellfire Gala Red Carpet Collection hardcover, that uh, normally retails for 75 bucks. You can get that from Diamond and you're going to get it for 37.50 from Cowabunga. But mm -hmm. if you get the $75 Young Avengers uh trade that is normally 75 bucks, you get it for 40 bucks. So Random House is going to gouge you for three more bucks uh than what you were going to you're used to get from Diamond. So boo. Yeah. Boo, yeah, you so passed the savings on to us. Boo. <laughs> so what um yeah there's a whole there's a whole nother side discussion there but long story short uh marvel through diamond there everybody has discount tiers um from the big publishers and that's based on the volume that you order because naturally the more you order the less work it is in the warehouse when you're moving you know, stacks of 200, which is what a lot of standard comics come packed in boxes of 200. It's a lot quicker to do that than three, right? You have to break open a box, pull out three, put it in the box. So the larger the volume you do with a, a publisher, usually the better the discount. And 
what has happened um, is that Penguin Random House has basically said, this is your discount, flatline. And their justification behind that is, well, we're giving you free shipping. And after doing the math, um, it doesn't end up any better. It, it's worse because we would rather pay for shipping uh, and have the increased discount based on the volume that we do. Um, and, and, you know, by no means are we a Midtown, uh, Mile High, DCBS, whatever. You know, we're still pretty, very small beans compared to them. And so just for us alone, losing, you know, discount on that um, hurts. Uh, we are keeping our discounts, though, at parity with the best discounts that you're going to get in in the market. So I know DCBS and InStock Trade sent out um, updated information that their Marvel discounts would be adjusting from 40 and 50 percent to 36 and 46 percent. And we'll we'll follow suit. We're going to do the same thing uh, because we, you know, that's been our goal from day one is we're going to stay at parity with them. And um, so that's why you're seeing some of these price changes. And it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. And, and ultimately, I, I can't sell stuff for uh, the same or cost. less than what I pay for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, there's something that doesn't add up there. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, have you um, like ever been like, well, we we probably should order. We've got orders that make sense for us to order 175. But if we order 200, we'll just get a, a case and no nobody will touch it. It'll be an unopened case, and there's a good chance it's not gonna. There's gonna be any damages. Do you ever do that math? Um, it depends on what it is. If it's something where it's very likely to go out of stock before we could get a damage claim in, um, yes, we will intentionally pad our orders with a few extra, you know, units. Depending if it's a single issue, we may add. 10 or 15 if it's something that we but, think but is not going to, to move get well. to the case number not to get because you said there's 200 in a case not you never you don't try to get them to the case number so you get an unopened case not usually with the single issues the time that we will up our numbers to get to a case is with the collected editions so like certain omnibus a case is going to contain eight of them and if i have to order seven for pre-orders i might as well just order the eighth one keep that case closed um no pun intended and then you know, I have one for the shelf and I, like you said, I don't have to worry about things being pulled out, put into a different box for packing. It's just, it's just done. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So it's more often with the collected editions. Now, as we get to our back half publishers in FOC, we've got, well, not really back half, premiere and back half, I guess. Uh, we've got a dark blood going to a second printing for number one from boom. And uh, we've got a book called Eat the Rich from Boom. It's the last chance to get this one. Um, I don't know who Pius Bach is. I'm not familiar with him or Sarah Gailey, but it does look interesting. I like the cover. Um, there's plenty of covers to choose from. And uh, this list, it says, What unspeakable horror eats away at the heart of Crestfall Bluffs. With law school and her whole life ahead of her, Joey plans to summer with her boyfriend, Aster, in his seemingly perfect hometown of Crestfall Bluffs. And you can imagine that uh, bold, horrifying psychological thriller in, ensues after that. Um, but booms, booms, they, they sneak up on you. They've got some really cool stuff and they just keep cranking it out. They do. And it's kind of always a, it's always a guessing game because you never know. Yeah. You never know what it's going to look like inside. And so Look at that Jenny Frizen cover C. Oh, man. That's great. You know, someone should lock her in to do exclusive cover. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, it's a <laughs> pretty smart. Yeah, she's a phenomenal artist. And also from Wisconsin, right? Um, lives in Chicago. Lives in Chicago, but uh, yeah, I don't know if she's actually originally from Wisconsin. I know Tim Seeley is, and Jenny is married to Tim's brother. So we'll just say by marriage, she's from Wisconsin. What's in the water up there, man? Comic ink? I guess. Yeah, I mean, Jerry Ordway's from, like, right here um, in the city that I live in. His yeah. family owned a, a bar that had yeah. nothing but Jerry Ordway art on the wall for years. So Ashley Witters are up there. 
Ashley Witter is from Madison. Um, yeah. uh, all the four star people, I think, are uh, from up there too. Um, yeah. yeah, something's going on. Uh, it's like Portland. Portland's Uber Comics. Yep, Portland right. has a big scene, and yeah. But I think they all moved there. I don't think they were born there. Um, the we've got final issue of Many Deaths of Layla Star. That's been good. I've enjoyed that a lot. Looking forward to seeing how that t- turns up. Go ahead. And then, yeah, I was just going to say, my next one's uh, Outside the Boom in a Blaze, Space, uh, Space Pirate Captain Harlock. This has been a phenomenal seller for us. Uh, really? Going, yeah, especially the Derek Chu cover um, that we've had. Derek Chu covers, I think, last, I can't remember what issue two had, but there's a couple of covers that people were really jonesing for there. Um but yeah, so Captain Harlock has a pretty good following. Hard, hard sci-fi? Um, yeah, I would say it it's yeah. probably leans heavier to, to that than anything else. But it definitely has kind of the manga roots, and a lot of folks love that. So Yeah. More Dynamite covers than you could ever need, desire, or want to know about. <laughs> Kiss Phantom Accept. Obsession number one. Yeah, There's pretty definitely Sealy cover for cover C. That's a huh. <laughs> that's great. And I will say though, in Dynamite, uh, a book that we we ordered up on big and literally blew us away was Red Sonia, Black, White, and Red. Uh, first, all, first of all, it's a $4.99 book, and it's worth it because the cover stock on this thing is super thick. Um, and it's actually it's really well-written, uh, at least the first issue was. And, I mean, you got Lucio Perillo art um, as the A cover. It, it's just fantastic. So this is... This book is one that uh, surprised us. We sold out instantly in the shop, uh, worked to order as much back in as we could. We've got a few more coming, but um, this was a definite surprise. Cosplay, cosplay clutter. My cosplay cutter cover has me stuttering. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Not for the, the uh, faint of heart. No. Holy moly. <laughs> Then from Aftershock, we've got the third issue of Bunny Mask. That's been a fun book and a yes. surprise. Oni, poor Oni. Oni just doesn't seem to be having anything anymore besides works in space, I guess. Uh, from Titan Comics, we have Elric Dreaming City. So Elric is seeing a resurgence. A lot of hardcover reprints had come out, uh, or hardcover collections over the last probably two years uh, and now we have a new ongoing number one which is very exciting a uh, lot of interest from folks in getting this michael moorcock uh, new series so one to keep an eye on for sure yeah i think that's all i had do you have anything else in there that you wanted to touch on no we had a little bit shorter foc this week which is kind of nice because the last few had been very very lengthy Well, then let's head on over to Lunar uh, and start our sneak peek, and we'll start with DC. I should really get Lunar back up then. Yeah, me too. (laughs) It's like we've never done this before. Yeah. You're allowed. You're allowed. We'll have it figured out next week. Uh Uh-huh. What's coming out? Ooh, blue and gold number one, eight issue. We've got Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. Could be fun. Got they usually Catwoman are. Jenny Frizen cover. Oh yeah, for issue thirty three. Ninety on it. Yeah, that's great. Nightwing eighty one second print and a Nightwing eighty two coming out. This continues to be an amazing uh, selling series. Tom Taylor, never doubt Tom Taylor. He's breathing life back into the uh, DC universe's greatest character. Greatest character. 
Wow. Might be a little bit of a reach there, but yeah, you know, my favorite character. Yeah, I, that was a tough choice between uh, Nightwing eighty one second printing and that Melinda Zuko cover because I know she's she's going to break out mm-hmm. if she hasn't already. Why choose? Get them both. That yeah. yeah. Why limit yourself? Shazam is back. Um, hopefully. It's not Eagle Sham and um, Jeff no, Johns. Tim Sheridan and Clayton Henry. They they couldn't hit a deadline. My goodness. <laughs> now, I have heard some good buzz on Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. But that's only one issue in, so... Yeah, I for us it it, it wasn't uh I mean it wasn't a dud, but it certainly didn't yeah. blow off the shelves. Well, it's kind of, yeah, it just kind of came out under the radar too. Yeah, I would say the the one thing we didn't hit off the bat is um not necessarily for spec, but more for just good stuff is the Batman and the Dark Prince Charming trade paperback. If you don't have the hard covers that um the story originally came out in two hard covers and it was one of my uh, kind of favorite batman side stories that i i read and it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful it's in enrico marini um like i said it came out in two hard covers originally it's got a sketchbook in the back of this trade paperback and the art and the story and this is is fun it's a lot of fun so i would say uh, if you're looking for something maybe in the vein of like a long Halloween um, or some, something similar to that from from a Batman uh, story that you haven't read yet, this would be a great one to pick up. Yeah, I, I think I remember our first. Do you remember the Cowies that we did, the crossover Cowies yes, that we did? Yes. I think this was one that when it was out in single issues, you were because you were a European um comics guy you were dipping into that dipping your toe in there and um we're really talking about talking this enrico marini guy up in this book that was yep. a while ago that's probably what five to five six Oof. years ago maybe? something like that yeah that's yeah cool. we we should probably see if we can still get some more of those cowies made <laughs> yeah well <laughs> co- covid covid closed the factory that's yeah that's un- unfortunate <laughs> Oh my goodness! Look at that Flash seven seventy two Brandon Peterson cover. That's pretty cool. That's all I see from DC. I think. Yeah, I think that's about all I see too. A lot of a lot of ongoing stuff coming out. Mm-hmm. Let's slide over to Image and see what they have coming out this week. All right. Um, Well, I would just call out Jupiter's Legacy Requiem. Um, The first issue of that kind of landed with a dud when it was canceled or not renewed for a second season. So, Did you read the um, first issue? No, I did not. The, the the back matter is Mark Millar just puffing his chest out, talking about <laughs> how great the the series is and how it's the most watched thing on Netflix and it's breaking every record Netflix ever had. And, you know, <laughs> he was just going on and on. I was like, oh, dude, <laughs> this is not going <laughs> to hold up for you, buddy. <laughs> We've got uh, the first issue of Mom or Mother of Madness coming out. Yeah. That was one that kind of got some buzz. Yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm on the fence on this whole uh, actors write comics thing. On the one hand, I do like new eyeballs coming to in, but on the other hand, they don't know what they're doing. Right, right. 
Radiant um, Black's been a good surprise. It I've has. Really, it's been a I've very strong seller. Really enjoyed it. Shadecraft is wonderful. It's a great book. I uh, have not read my Skybound X's, so. We do have Spawn Universe second print coming out. Spawn Universe one second print. That's uh, I have a hunch that's going to be a really good seller. And then, oh, yes, this was the one where they added uh, how many covers for uh, Walking Dead 19, right? Yeah. We've got yeah. our Killing big me. first appearance of Michonne. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It, you know, it, it's been wonderful reading them sing in single issues because I didn't have the I wasn't on the book back then. So I had I had to read them in trades and hardcovers and I just blew through them, you know, as fast as I could eat as, as fast as I could read them. I I, I would go burn through them. And um, it's kind of neat to just experience them in a single issue and, you know, read the letter hacks and, you know, look at the the his notes uh, on the book and see what changed from his notes or what they thought the book that book was going to be to what it became. It's, it is really cool, but th this is a ridiculous amount of covers. And this, this whole, <laughs> what is he doing now with second printings? Now that we have connecting covers for second printings or, you know, people, character sketches. The, sketch, for, the Finch sketch. Yeah. 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 That's kind of a bummer. I wish they wouldn't have went back to print on those, but I mean, I guess that's good demand. I think uh, that's obviously that's probably it for image. Um, what about Dark Horse really looks like the, the big one to call it here is Harrow County coming back for you. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed that book. So um, makes me happy. And this is being written by Colin Bunn, who obviously has a very good grasp of horror. Yes. Uh, IDW, we were just talking about, um, why do they have free comic book day stuff here? So, I mean, uh, they're, so they're shipping us free comic book day stuff comes in all goofy from the different publishers based on when it can get slotted into their printing. So what this is indicating is that we're going to be getting the IDW free comic book day stuff in this week. We, it'll come with a, Really you embargo fancy it. piece of uh, hot pink colored paper that Diamond prints on it, not for not for sale or distribution until this date. We also have Bermuda number one from them. It's a John Lehman book. could be kind of fun it kind of has it when i remember when i looked at this uh when it was first listed it it kind of felt like a kind of a modern day conan set in the bermuda triangle yeah and we were just talking about star wars high republic avenge adventures and um, so here's number six so it, this is a two-parter so i guess it didn't end well, maybe it will have ended by the time that FOC books arrives. Yeah, I think I think this is the end of the first story arc. The other one is the, a new story arc in a different story. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will call out, though, with IDW, again, for collected edition folks who uh, don't want to miss lose, missing something, uh, Lock and Key, Key House Compendium hardcover. This is one that we've been getting increased amount of calls for. Um, so just be aware that this could be a hard one to get if you're on the hunt for it. it looks and, good on the shelf. Oh gosh, they I like the library editions. Those look really nice and fancy, but this is going to be a thick one, 976 pages. Um, so it's kind of going to be DC style, hefty hardcover. Mm -hmm. 
And then Marvel's given us a uh, fifth issue of Alien, which has been fun. And another entry into the Extreme Carnage world. We've got Extreme Carnage Phage number one. Oh, I forgot. Big Doctor Strange epic coming out. What's it called? This is the Doctor Strange epic collection, Master of Mystic Arts. It's a oh. new printing. This was one of the uh, out-of-print expensive Doctor Strange epics. Contains some Strange Tales stuff, uh, as well as Amazing Spider-Man Annual. Great, great stuff. What else we have? Gamma Flight 2. Gamma Flight 1 was a very strong seller for us. I don't know if you read that one at all. Yeah. What would you think? No. Uh, no. No, I did not. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I said yeah, but I meant yeah? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. And um, as we slide down to uh, Moon Knight number one, just know that you cannot pick that as your pick of the week. That would be my pick of the week. Which cover? I don't know. I'm thinking. <laughs> yes, all the covers. <laughs> it's tough. It's I tough. think there's one standout personally. I just I see one cover that you you can't not get. Well, cover A is the best. I would I would say cover A is very very good. I would say cover B. Do you, like you, you like the Del Auto? Yeah, I think that's that's just something. They're all very good covers. Yeah, they did a really good job. Even the it's Scotty like, Young one is really kind of cool in its in its uh, Scotty Young style. Yeah. It has a little bit more detail, or I guess I should say more background than a lot of his covers do, and I yeah, really appreciate just, that. It's usually just a white background. Yep. and yeah. solid color with the figure over it, so... Yes, Moon Knight. We will be hip deep in Moon Knight. <laughs> God, I hope it doesn't suck. Yeah, that would that would that would really be bad if it did. <laughs> but um, the other next uh, next number one up that we've got is Star Wars Bounty Hunters Jabba Hut. That's um, that's a fun oh um, yeah yeah I, I think those will sell well yeah uh, this, actually the War of the Bounty Hunters uh, as a whole it's a it's a big event a lot bigger than I think we thought it was going to be at, at first but mm -hmm. has been selling very strong across the entire line so a lot of people in for this War of the Bounty Hunters thing I think between the Mandalorian show um, and just Boba Fett always having kind of that real cult following. Yeah. Uh, bounty hunters were definitely something right for Marvel to to go with. So. That's everything I saw from Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> but I cannot believe. Dynamite is giving us hero gasm from the boys as their pre comic book day. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> and for those of you that want something a little bit more tasteful, Vampirella yeah. One by Christopher Priest. Yes. It does have an Alex Ross cover, um, so really cannot go wrong there. Ready for boom? Yes. Like right off the bat, we've got a new number one, Dark Blood by Latoya Morgan. Um, could be kind of an interesting story where we've got a main character who essentially has the uh, abilities to almost change history. Um, could be could be very very interesting. Set in 1955, Alabama. Um, which obviously I think we can probably make some general assumptions of what the tone is going to be around, which is, <laughs> it's, it's prime, you know, now's the right time to be discussing these things. And if story is written tastefully, uh, it could be very exciting. Sure. I know one of the um, stories that I liked that was kind of 
set in a similar vein was um i want to say strange fruit yeah okay the jg uh, jones yeah. book jg yeah. jones that was that was absolutely fantastic so um could be could be one of those um really strong books and that also came out from boom so Proctor Valley Road 5 coming out, 5 of 5. This has been another strong seller for us. A lot of folks really digging the series of buying multiple covers. Cool what looking else? manga. Yeah. I make boys cry. Cover A and B. I'm surprised it's uh, not doing what better than that. Looks like that looks like something that would sell well. The Jamie Tyndall covers. Yeah. He definitely has his following. Absolute Comic Group. The they are oh, they are not at the OC. I'm guessing. No, they are not. Reminds me a little of like with the wraparound covers that doing some of the things that Avatar used to do. Yes, very my much. Be my beloved Avatar. Oh, and yeah, because they're not looking good for Avatar right now. Yeah, I think is this the last last song? Last song number four? Is that it? Is it finally the the end? I believe it is. Yeah, they, they, had, they had artist problems. That was, was, does that explain some of the delay? It could. So we've got a little bit farther down uh, in our hard case crime entries. Yeah. Issue number four of Mickey Woodcock Girl Electrified Tesla. And if you're one of those collectors who likes, you know, certain and specific things, um, there is a section of collectors out there who want to have every cover that has a swastika on it, not because they believe in it, but because a lot of that original war propaganda comics that came out during World War II would feature that. And so that's kind of something they keyed in on as a as a point in time of their collecting. Yep. And the A cover has a Nazi soldier with the swastika on, the swastika band on. So if you're one of those collectors who likes going for a certain thing, that could be something for you. And if you're, if you like damsels in distress or damsels in bond, damsels in bondage, uh, that's your C cover. So they get you covered yep. both ways. Those are yeah. those both subsets of uh, collecting. And if you like pictures. <laughs> with a camera that's your b cover we've got everything here for you uh and then right shortly after that is nottingham number five this book subsequent prints on one through four i mean everybody's clamoring for it um again not a book that's on foc too much uh we do get the the subsequent printings on foc but not all the a covers make it so um nottingham five is probably going to be a small print run and probably going to be in demand yet again yeah and the last time you were on here your pick of the week was white number one and it got allocated so we all got right. boned on that one and so now we have white number one the second print which is hopefully not allocated i'm guessing there's like fifty thousand copies of this one um let's see if since, I can look on the back end of Diamond and see if they've got any info. Since nobody got This their is first not one. going to be allocated. <laughs> so there should be more than enough of these. Yeah. It, it, between this and last song, and I've been burned so many times by Black Mask. It's just really hard to love them. They really make it hard to love you. They just keep doing dumb stuff. Yeah.
And that closes it down for me. I'll I think ahead, so. Get, I'll get my pick out of the way right now. It's the cover A of Moon Knight number one. And no surprise to anyone. Eric, please, <laughs> you have the floor. Oh, where to go with mine? Um, hmm. It's a tough one for me. I'm not going to lie. There's two that I'm waffling between. Okay. You want to do a, you want to do an A and a B? Hmm. Do I or do I just want to put all of my eggs in one basket? Well, that's that's how the big boys do it. But you know, you're. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. All right then. Well, this big boy is going to go with Nottingham number five. Okay. All right. I like it. And. And then the uh, bonus, I guess, bonus pick, if you will, um, I would go with Dark Blood number one, the A cover. The, the B cover is just a little too Jetson E for today. But I think the A cover, especially if it's a good story, um, it's something that seems like it would be adaptable to television or movie in kind of a similar vein as Kyle XY. What was the runner-up? Dark Blood number one from Boom. Cover Dark eight. Blood. Dark Blood. Okay. Oh, nice. I like. I like it. All right. Well, thanks, Eric, for joining us. Um, I appreciate you stepping up like this when Kyle flakes on me. But um, well, we have to keep we have to keep the innocent protected. <laughs> <laughs> Whistles must be blown, and uh, That's right. he's gonna have to do that. Um. We want to thank you for listening to uh, Comics for Fun and Profit, and we will talk to you next week.